Hello and welcome back to Here We Tow. Today I'm at Leeds Caravan Centre in West Yorkshire and they've kindly allowed me to come and film a review of this. It's the Bailey Pegasus Grande SE Brindisi. It's a four berth single axle caravan and it's eight feet wide. As you can see, it's a lovely blustery Yorkshire day, so I will do my best with the wind and rain, but we'll soon be inside keeping warm because I've put the Trumer air heat blown heating on. Right, let's crack on. So what do we need to know about the Brindisi? Facts and figures. So this caravan, as I say, it's single axle. It is eight feet wide. Length, it's 24 feet and three inches or seven meters and 38 centimeters. Weight wise, it's 1,539 kilograms, and that's going to give you a good payload of 155 kilos. You can upplate the caravan to 1,600 kilos, and that'll give you a really good payload of 216 kilograms. So, weights and sizes, it's all sounding pretty good. Let's start at the front. So, what do we need to know about this caravan? Well, it's on the Alco chassis. We do get ATC as standard. It comes with the Bailey GRP sides and the Alutec. The front is a one piece white. We don't get a front locker on the Brindisi, which is standard across the Baileys. Storage, we will find some storage as we make our way round. We've got the big Bailey front window that's a bit of a, a trademark of the caravans from Bailey and has been for a long time. We have two smaller side windows. Up on that roof, we are going to get a solar panel giving us 100 watts and an aerial as well. So let's make our way down the side. Now, what I do like about the Grande SE is that when they changed it to the SE, they introduced these dove gray sides because I did say when I actually had a Bailey Pegasus Grande on a loan a few years ago, I think it was back in 2019, and what I said was, it just looked a bit boring. And to be honest, it did. This, however, takes it to a different level. And I'm really glad that they listened to my advice. But they took on board some feedback and we got these silver sides. So we've got Dove Grey, we've got the Pegasus Grande decals. The front here, we've got a small locker and we've got a gas barbecue point, which is what we all do like to see. Coming down the near side, We've got the two-piece door with window and we've got the awning light up there uh, as well. Coming along further, we've got the small Dometic vent. So that tells us we're going to find our smaller Dometic fridge and freezer here. We'll have a look when we go inside. Single axle, we've got one alloy wheel with Alco receiver. In terms of security, you will need a wheel lock for this, but you do get a tracker with it. Coming down, we can see that we've got our electric hookup point here, and we've also got an external plug socket as well. That's quite a handy feature. We've got a locker here, which is going to give us some storage under the island bed. Again, we'll see the island bed when we venture inside. Now, we make our way from the near side to the rear of the caravan. And at the back on the Brindisi, we've got one big single white piece. We've got the light clusters. They've looked like this for quite a long time. Personally, I think the Pegasus Grande SE is due a little bit of a revamp on the back end. The Alicanto has got a, a much more modern styling, which I do prefer. We've then got up here the decals for the Bailey Pegasus Grande SE, as we can see. So that's the back end, and we've just got some grab handles there. What I'll do now is I'll take us round to the offside so we can see what we're getting there. So let's hop around there. So here we are on the offside of the Brindisi and it's just as windy and wet here as well. True caravanning weather. So what are we getting here on this offside? We've got our toilet cassette point and our external flush. It's interesting that the locker box on the front near side that we saw does look very much like a toilet cassette locker box. I'm not sure if I like that, if I'm honest, but that's what we're getting. We've then got a good size window and this is looking into the bedroom space that we'll see inside. We've then got our opposite side alloy. 
We've got a good size window into the kitchen space. We've got our gas locker box. This will take two six kilogram gas bottles. We've got the vent for the Truma air blown heating and hot water. The Truma system will work on gas or electric. So if you're off grid, you can still have your heating and your hot water. We've then got our whale water point. So when you arrive on site, this is where we're going to be connecting up our water from the aqua roll or water hog. We've got another window into the lounge. And then we've got a locker storage under the seating area. We'll see the seating when we go in. So that's the exterior of the Pegasus Grande SE. We've got those decals, we've got these silver sides. This caravan is £29,000. So what do we think so far? Is this something that you would be putting on your list in that eight foot range? Let's go inside and you can make a better decision once we've seen what's going on in there. So inside the Brindisi, let's have a look at what we're going to get. So because it's eight feet wide, we do get a good amount of internal space. This is the lounge area and as you can see, it's the G shape. Now, as I said years ago, when we had a Bologna on loan, we had this G-shaped lounge and we got on with it quite well. Jules liked it more than I did, to be honest, but we did get on with it quite well. So the good thing about the G-shape is it's the full wraparound. You get the nice uh, back support cushions. But the one thing you don't get is that chest. And I know a lot of people are not willing to sacrifice that, but that's just something you have to consider whether it means that much to you or not. But what you do get is you do get this nice fold away table here. You can remove this for when you want to convert this area into a large double bed. So this table is, is very useful and we did use this quite a lot. As I say, this area converts into a large double bed and it's massive. It's seven feet four by four feet. So it's a good size bed area. Just down here, you do also get a plug socket at floor level. So if you're wanting to plug something in like a laptop and use this as a working space, you can do that. I'm going to work my way around the front of the Brindisi so we can see all the features. So we've got these seating areas, we've got this table. We do have the fly screens and the concertina blinds. Again, these are a favourite with most people and we're going to get those all round. We're going to get a good amount of cupboard space. This is where the aerial is going to come in. So with your cupboard space, always be careful when you're filling the cupboards, you will have that 155 kilo payload as standard, unless you up plate and then you're getting the big 216. We've got a storage cupboard here and there is space in this cupboard for the DAB radio. The radio will play through these Pioneer speakers that we can see. And underneath, we're going to get several little LED lights. Now, some of these lights do have a USB charger within them. The only thing I'm not so keen on is the way that this cupboard comes across here at this angle. If you sat there, you're going to be almost sat under the cupboard and you do just have to be careful when you stand up. So I'm just mentioning that from a, a personal point of view that I've noticed on this model. We've got lights above and then we've got this big bailey window that I mentioned outside and the two smaller side windows. We've got another LED light here and this one has got the USB charger that I mentioned. These cupboards basically mirror the near side cupboards but just give you an idea of the storage that you're going to be getting. You can see in there good amount of depth and height, height to that cupboard and another little light as well there. So that's the lounge area. We do have the Truma air blown heating, as I mentioned, and there's a number of vents within this space. I did actually turn the Truma heating on before I came into the caravan because it's absolutely freezing today and it's really brought this up to temperature very quickly. So it is effective. It does work very well. As I move down through the caravan, it's just an open space and because it's eight feet wide, we're getting lots of room in here. I'll start with the kitchen. Now, this, there is a good amount of worktop space, but there is more on the near side as well, which I'll show you. So we've got a good amount of kitchen space. 
worktop space, we've got these two sockets here for plugging in kettles, toasters, coffee machines and all the usual. We've got the Truma panel here, so that's where you're going to operate your heating and your hot water. We've got a nice splashback with the Pegasus Grande SE written on there as well. Sink, good size sink, uh, swivel tap, obviously hot and cold. There is lighting underneath and we'll have a look now in these overhead lockers and just see what we're getting in these. So these are a good size. We've got a shelf in this one. That's obviously your plate rack in there. So good amount of overhead locker space there in the kitchen. Now, if you're not cooking, you're going to be able to use this as extra worktop space. But when you are using your hob, you are going to lose that. We'll lift this up. Now, this is our Thetford uh, gas oven, grill and hob. I do like these Thetford uh, appliances. We're getting an electric hot plate. So when you're on electric hookup, you can use that. You've got your three gas burners, your rings. So if you're off grid or you prefer to cook on gas, magic, you've got that. I'll just close these down again. And then underneath, we've got the Thetford gas grill. And then we've got the oven as well. And it's a good size oven. And under there, I'll just show us that. We've got this flap that drops down. And there's a little bit of storage under there. And then moving across under the sink, we're going to have this pull-out drawer. It has got a cutlery tray in it, so we've already got a tray ready to put our bits and pieces. And then we've got this cupboard here. So this is quite useful. It's got a good amount of storage on the bottom and the top shelf. So not bad at all, really. And as I said, this caravan is £29,000. So price point, this is middle of the range for Bailey. So you can make your comparison with other caravans that you might be interested in to see how it's comparing for you. Worktop space. Now, although you get a reasonable, a reasonable amount on this side, we also find this good amount of space here. And the idea being is this is where you're going to be putting your television. We've got a plug socket, we've got our aerial socket, and we've got some light switches. So television on here. Up above this worktop space, we've got the Russell Hobbs microwave. Now this is a new feature, it's 650 watt, but it's plateless. You don't have a microwave plate on there. So when you're towing, you don't have to worry about taking it out or it flying off and doing some damage. So that's a, a new feature for this. Above, we've got a little bit of storage there, and you can see that's where the Truma solar panel is going to feed into the caravan. There's also a plug socket for your microwave. And if I come down here, open it on this side, we are getting a Dometic fridge. Now it's an under-counter fridge. When you have a count under-counter, you obviously have a smaller fridge and freezer. The fridge is 103 litres and this little freezer compartment is 12 litres. So you are sacrificing or compromising on that fridge and freezer space. But it is a single axle as well. So you've got to remember we are shorter. The door I mentioned as we came in, uh, when I was outside, sorry, which is the two piece. It has got a blind in it and it's also got a bin already fixed to it. The one thing I'm not so keen on on the Pegasus is the almost lack of door handle. The Alicanto doesn't, it does have a proper handle, something to get hold of. I've always found with these, it's almost finding the right bit to hold. But again, that might just be me, but that's just something that I've always noticed on those. When we come in, we'll find our control panel as well here. That's for your electric and water. So that's easily, easily accessible as you come in. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to start venturing back because we've got the lounge, we've got that good sized kitchen, we've got loads of floor space. I do like the amount of floor space. We do have a privacy screen here. Now you unhook it and simply slide it across and it's going to connect to this side here. So we've got a privacy screen privacy screen so on a night uh, you don't have to draw all your blinds if you don't want you can just pull that across this is a four berth so if you do have people using the two berths up front 
they are going to have to walk through your bedroom space to get into that bathroom. So that's just something to think about if you are a family. Will this layout work for you with the bathroom being at the back? So as I move back, I'll start here with some wardrobe space. So we're going to find our first wardrobe on this side. Now it is a good size wardrobe. It's wide and it's deep, so that's good. We've got a little shelf unit here, so you can put your cup of tea on there on a night time or a morning. And then we've got a little bit of storage just under that wardrobe. Now I'll move back this way. So as I come through here, the island bed, it's on the near side of the caravan. We've got the headboard. This is a good size bed. It's six foot three in length. So when you extend it into your night mode, it's six foot three and it's four foot seven wide. So good width as well. And I do like the amount of floor space we're getting. There's loads of room. It's a very open plan feel is this layout, unlike the center washrooms. So if that's something that you want, this will be a good layout for you. We do have a sunroof and hecky above. That does have blinds and fly screen and that'll let fresh air in and out. On this side, we've got a wardrobe two, same as that one there, and the shelving unit. And there's also some storage as well. These overhead lockers, good size. I'll just open this one up so we can have a look. Good size indeed. And underneath, as we can see here, we've got these little LEDs. We do have one with a USB, that's on that side there. So somewhere at least to charge your gadgets on a night time. We are lacking drawer space in here. For some people, you like your drawers. I do, um, and that's something that we're not getting. There is, that's a compromise. On this side here, we have got uh, another plug socket. We've got uh, an aerial point. We've got this nice mirror uh, for looking in. With the plug socket, you can obviously use that for like a hair dryer or hair straighteners or whatever you want to use, but at least it's there and it's practical. We've got a nice little bit of uh, space here on this worktop for putting toiletries or bits and pieces. And there's a, a handy little storage cupboard as well, just underneath it. So. Although we haven't got drawers, we have got some storage, so that's a benefit. The window is obviously opposite the bed, so when you're sat there, you can look out. It is letting a good amount of light in as well, and we've still got the fly screen and the blinds, so you're not just reliant on these curtains. Personally, I've never, never really drawn curtains. I've always just stuck to my blinds. So that's the bedroom. Good amount of fl uh, floor space good size bed and then we move back into the rear washroom. Now the good thing with this layout is you do generally get a good door space to come into. You do get a sliding screen for privacy. That obviously closes there. Um, but sometimes you do lose in the amount of bathroom space that you get and we're going to see that as we come in. So if we start on the offside wall of the um, the Brindisi. We'll open this up. We've got a cupboard which has got shelving. Again, that's maybe three inches in depth at a push. We've got the Thetford toilet. It is a swivel toilet so you, you can manoeuvre that where you want. There's a good amount of leg space around it and there's the Truma air vents in this space so it's going to keep it nice and warm when you are showering. We've got some little shelving units there. And as we can see, we've got a good size mirror. And this mirror runs the full length of this bathroom. So if you want to come round here and we'll have a closer look at what we're getting in this rear shower room. So we can see a little bit deeper into the shower and washroom. Because this is a single axle caravan, this is a smaller washroom than you may get on some of the larger twin axles. But again, you've got to compromise on something. We do have several shelves there though to put our toiletries on. We've got a sink in this corner with a swivel tap and we've got um, a towel hook here. The one thing I will say is there is this little shelf. You just have to be careful with that when you've got your head into the sink. Personally, 
and this is like just personally I'd have liked to have seen a larger sink. I think there could have been a larger sink here. I appreciate this leaves more f uh, floor space and room, but just something a little bit bigger. It's almost like they just squished in a smaller sink just to make it fit. So that's just a personal thing. But I do like this big mirror and it's really well illuminated. I'll venture into the shower space. So the shower cubicle, um, again, it's a smaller space because it's single axle, but they haven't put shelving all around it to, to detract from the amount of space that we are getting. So it, it is perfectly usable. A really good amount of headroom. That's a good thing in here. We've got a nice light. We've got the little hecky there to let light in, but also let that steam and condensation out. We've got the frosted screen to pull across. Shower gels, you are just going to have to find a place for those down on the floor, but there is a good amount of room in here. So do not be put off when I'm using the word compromise. I'm just making it clear about what I have found as I've been in here. We've got hooks for our towels though, so that's good. And we've got another little roof uh, light and the toilet roll holder. So for the £29,000 price point I'd say the bathrooms are the bathrooms fairly simple but I think that's just the compromise that's been made on this caravan this bedroom area at the 29,000 pound price point good storage it's good to see the USB I'm missing some drawers though to put some that that that's niggled me I think as that as you might be able to tell but that's the only thing I'm missing in here um, but yeah, the floor space is really good. This living space, this is really nice. I do like this G shape. I like that we're getting the, um, the Thetford oven and grill here with a good amount of worktop space plus this. Unfortunately, I've lost my big tower fridge, freeze and freeze, fridge and freezer, which I always like. I like the microwave here. It's not over the, the grill um, the hob so I do like that there I've had the trumer on for a while and it's warmed this through really nicely so that's effective for 29,000 eight foot wide caravan it's well equipped we've got solar it's not really missing much but it's interesting to compare this to the the bigger brother uh, like the Bologna and, and the models like that. So if you're looking at single axle, add it to your list. It's been a while since I've been in a Bailey um, and I must say, I think they have improved it. I'm not saying it was bad before, do not take that from that, but I do feel some improvements have been made and I think they've probably listened to feedback that they've maybe had, which I always think is a really positive thing from a manufacturer. So yeah. I've enjoyed having a look around. So there we go. Eight foot wide, single axle, Brindisi, £29,000, Truma heating. Yeah, so there we go. If you're interested in how much it would cost to insure this caravan, there is a link below for Caravan Guard, which you can use to get 10% off your quote. Thank you to Leeds Caravan Centre who've allowed us today to come and film this review. We really appreciate them accommodating us. We always appreciate it when a dealership does let us come to film. I've put a link for them in the description. I've also put a link to the Bailey website so you can have a look at the full range of models, see which layout might work best for you. So as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.